Well, the headlines have been nonstop for more than a year. People are being shot and killed at alarming rates in cities across the country. That includes in Providence, where shootings and murders spiked last summer and haven't slowed down since. Tonight, Target 12 examines crime data in depth, pinpointing the neighborhoods where violence has erupted the most. Target 12 investigator Steph Machado has been examining the trend and joins us now with what's being done to stop it. Providence had successfully brought its violent crime rate down before the pandemic, so an increase in gun crimes is raising alarm. In 2021 so far, 75 people have been shot in the city of Providence. The bullets fired in nightclubs, a laundromat, a restaurant during breakfast, a young woman gunned down leaving a friend's house. A Target 12 review of the addresses where shootings have happened this year show people are being injured or killed by gunfire across the city from the northern border to South Providence. The neighborhood with the highest number of shootings this year is Washington Park, where 11 people have been shot so far in 2021, eight of them in May during a gang-related shootout on Carolina Avenue. I was really worried and then I barely go out. Patricia Delgado moved to Washington Park right before that shooting. She was outside when it happened and heard the shots. Now she stays in. It makes me worried too since I have a little voice, you know, he will have to get raised here, so I'm worried about that. Shootings in Providence had been dropping in the past decade, from 110 people shot in 2011 down to just 35 in 2019. But they spiked again in 2020, with 73 people shot in Providence last year and 75 so far in 2021. In the middle of 2020, something happened. Providence's police chief Hugh Clements says the city is following a national trend of increased shootings and homicides. This is disturbing what's going on in the city right now. Criminologists around the country are scratching their heads and grappling with exactly what is taking place. One explanation is an increase in gun sales. The number of federal background checks for gun purchases initiated in Rhode Island more than doubled in 2020, according to the FBI. Criminals often get people with clean records to buy guns for them in what are called straw purchases, which Clement says are common in Providence. We are seeing way more firearms and guns in the community uh, than we've ever seen. To date, we have 183 guns taken off the street, which I believe is uh, the highest number in my recollection in years. The shootings in Providence are also becoming deadlier. While the number of people shot was higher in 2011, there were just 12 homicides that year in the city. This year, so far, there have been 22 homicides, the highest number since 2009. All but two were shootings. How many officers are specifically dedicated to gun violence? We, we only have a small violent crime task force uh, with a sergeant and four. We're looking to add to that. Clement says the 49 new Providence police officers that just graduated from the academy will allow more experienced officers to backfill those specialized units. When the recruits finish field training in January, they'll bolster the number of officers patrolling the streets. Where we see an uptick in violent crime or gun activity in certain areas, we direct resources towards that area. Right now, that's Washington Park, South Providence, the West End, Federal Hill, Olneyville, and the Wanskuk neighborhood up near Providence College, which has seen 10 shootings this year, the second most for any Providence neighborhood. I worry about the safety of the communities where there's gun violence occurs all the time, and that's what keeps me up at night, but I really think we're ready to turn the corner. Police are, of course, just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to tackling gun crimes. Chief Clements refers to it as a shared responsibility with other social service agencies, clinicians, and organizations. With the Target 12 investigators, I'm Steph Machado, 12 News. Now to a Target 12 investigation under fire. Shootings and homicides have been on the rise in Providence since last summer after years of decline. As we told you at 5, how police are trying to crack down on the problem. Target 12 investigator Steph Machado joins us now with how COVID relief funds could also help. Providence's rise in shootings coincides with a large influx of cash from the American Rescue Plan. Some of it is expected to go towards tackling gun violence. 75 people have been shot in Providence this year. The youngest, a 14-year-old girl watching fireworks on the 4th of July. The oldest, a 46-year-old man shot in the chest on Bellevue Avenue. 
Some of the victims survived, like Jasmine Washington, shot inside Revel Lounge in October. Two more inches, I would have been, a, I would have been, they would have hit a major artery, I would have been dead. But 20 have died from gunshots this year, including Melvin Ricardo Perez Reyes, who was doing his laundry on Broad Street, and Maya Brophy Behrman, gunned down by a passing car while leaving a friend's house in Mount Hope. This is disturbing, what's going on in the city right now. Criminologists around the country are scratching their heads and grappling with exactly what is taking place. The shootings this year have been spread throughout the city, according to a Target 12 review of the addresses, with the most people shot in the Washington Park and Wanscuck neighborhoods, followed by Olneyville, Elmwood, and Lower South Providence. A few neighborhoods, including downtown and several on the east side, haven't seen any people shot in 2021. Shootings in Providence had been dropping in the past decade, from 110 people shot in 2011 down to just 35 in 2019. But they spiked again in in 2020, with 73 people shot in Providence last year and 75 so far in 2021. In the middle of 2020, something happened. Providence Police Chief Hugh Clements says one explanation is there are just more guns on the street. We are seeing way more firearms and guns in the community uh, than we've ever seen. Gun sales skyrocketed during the pandemic. In 2019, in Rhode Island, there were 24,000 background checks initiated for gun sales, according to the FBI. That more than doubled to 51,000 in 2020. Predominantly right now, straw purchases are a hot item. They'll have somebody with a clean record buy it locally or out of state. Clement says taking guns and gunmen off the street is only part of the solution. We know we can't arrest our way out of this alone. Providence is getting $166 million from the American Rescue Plan Act passed by Congress to help recover from the pandemic. In July, the city council voted to spend $2.6 million of that for anti-violence initiatives, including mentoring, non-violence training, and year-round youth jobs. The half a million dollars for non-violence training was awarded to the Non-Violence Institute in Providence earlier this month. Executive Director Cedric Huntley says the money will be spent to give young people in the community a stipend for participating. You know, frankly, we just have too many guns out there on the streets, too many people that have lost hope and are turning to violence and to guns to solve their problems and to solve their disputes. And that's something that we're constantly working on. Mayor Jorge Lorza is expected to submit a proposal for how to spend additional American Rescue Plan money in the coming weeks. Meanwhile, 49 new Providence police recruits are now out in the field training with other officers. That will increase the number of patrols in Providence in January. I'm Steph Machado, 12 News.